The wind form constructed in the water bodies are called offshore wind forms. If we compare the operation of this offshore wind turbine with the land-based wind turbine, they both have exactly the same working principle. In both cases, wind turns the blades of the turbine around the rotor which spins a generator which creates electricity. If they both are same, do you think constructing wind forms in ocean is necessary? Because constructing in ocean is not an easy thing. It's going to cost a lot. There are many offshore wind farms currently operating. India is also planning to construct offshore wind farms. What makes this offshore wind farm so special? To know about this, continue watching. Hi, I'm Benila. In today's video, I'm talking about offshore wind farms. Wind turbines convert kinetic energy from the wind into mechanical power. The generator converts this mechanical power into electricity. The logic is, energy from the wind is converted into electricity. Do you think we can convert all the energy from the wind into electrical energy? No. A German physicist, Albert Betz, concluded in 1919 that no wind turbine can convert more than 59.3% of the kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical energy. This percentage is calculated by considering the ideal case. So, in the real world, even the best designed wind turbine can convert well below 59.3% of the energy from the wind. So, our aim should be utilizing this energy effectively. The energy available for the conversion mainly depends on the wind speed and the swept area of the turbine. First, let's see about this wind speed. Power in the wind is proportional to the cube of the wind speed. So, even a small increase in wind speed can tremendously increase the power in the wind. That's the key point. We need to build the wind form where the wind speed is very high. The wind blows faster over the ocean than the land. That is because the land has mountains, trees and buildings that resist the wind flow. This is one of the reasons why offshore wind forms has higher electricity generation per amount of capacity installed. Now, you may ask, why don't we use the land where the wind speed is higher? That's a good idea. All the wind turbines in the land are constructed in sites where the wind speed is higher. But there is one limitation. In any high speed wind site, we can't construct any number of turbines as we wish. Because if the turbines are very close to each other, the one located too close behind would be driven only by slower wind. Therefore, Wind turbines need a minimum distance of 8 times the rotor diameter. Next, let's see about swept area. We know that area of the circle can be found using the formula pi r square. Here, the radius r is the length of the turbine blades. From this, we can understand that more power can be captured from the wind if we increase the length of the turbine blades. What do you think? Is it easy to construct the extremely large wind turbine in land? Transporting such wind turbine components inland must face some logistical challenges such as narrow roadways or tunnels. In ocean, offshore wind turbine components can be transported by ships and barges. This enables offshore wind developers to build large turbines capable of producing more electricity. Haliadex is one of the world's largest offshore wind turbines. Its rotor diameter is 220 meters and has a capability of generating 67 gigawatt hour annually. Up to 16,000 European households could be powered by one Haliadex. While the world's largest land-based wind turbine is powerful enough to provide electricity for only 5,000 European homes. As you compare these two, you might understand how powerful these offshore wind turbines are. Even though the offshore wind turbines are more efficient, constructing them is not going to be easy. It's going to cost a lot. But the cost of offshore wind turbines has fallen about 80% over the last two decades. The advancement in technologies could make it fall even more in the next decade. The development of offshore wind form in ocean has negative impacts such as noise pollution. However, Multiple studies conducted on several active European offshore wind farms have shown that most of these negative side effects subside over time, eventually becoming negligible. The footprints of these structures may also result in loss of habitat, but the submerged part of their structure can act as artificial reefs. 
as the number of offshore wind farms have increased approaches for environmental monitoring and assessment has improved over time however knowledge on this topic is lacking and requires further study over longer period of time the world must shift faster towards wind and solar energy to reduce our carbon dioxide emission through fossil fuel offshore wind turbines will play a decent role to reach our net zero goal if you are interested to know about this net zero i do have a video over here thank you so much for watching see you in my next video